Welcome to today's Tech 20 Practical Assignments Using Digital Comics. My name is Rebecca Anderson and I am the Educational Technology Manager at the Napa County Office of Education. And this is a photo of me and my son at the Crab Pot where I thought this photo pose would be hilarious. And what I actually found to be most funny was when we were looking at the picture later and we found the girl photobombing us in the background with that look. So in PowerPoint, I just threw on a couple of thought bubbles to make the slide a little more interesting. And that brings us to today's topic, using digital comics. Um, the purpose of today is to share with you some practical assignments and classroom ideas for you and your students. And in addition to this, I'll be sharing with you a variety of tools that you and your students can use to actually create the comics. And please keep in mind that this is not a step-by-step -step training. This session is meant to just introduce you to some new ideas and new tools. We only have 20 minutes, so we can't get into new, too much detail. Um, please do not feel like you need to take fast and furious notes. This session is being recorded, and I will be sharing with you at the end of today's session a link to a page which will include um, links to the ideas that I've shared along with additional um, links to websites that have tons of assignment ideas and links to all of the tools. So let's start out with the question of why even bother incorporating digital comics into your lessons? Um, this is certainly a valid question and I totally get why some people might be thinking it's a really stupid idea. But there are actually many practical uses and tons of different assignment ideas and in a moment I'm going to be sharing those with you. But just keep in mind that as I'm introducing them to you that comic creation can be great if it's supporting your learning goals and the objectives for your students. So I'm not suggesting that you just incorporate comic creation into your classrooms just for the sake of incorporating it into your classroom, um, only if it makes sense. So that said, though, I hope you'll uh, keep an open mind and you'll be willing to consider how you might adapt any of these ideas given your own subject areas, grade levels, and the goals that you have for your students. With all of that in mind, I feel like it's worth pointing out some of the characteristics of comics as it's these characteristics and the process of creating comics that are going to help lead you in determining the best ways to incorporate them or maybe you decide not to um, into your classroom. So we know that comics are visual. Uh, we know that they include text and that the amount of text can vary. Uh, we know that comics require reading and they require the interpretation of visuals. We know that uh, r the creation of comics is a creative process. Um, creating comics also requires writing skills. And we also know that comics are typically linear. So uh, left to right and content is divided up into boxes. Today I'm going to introduce to you 10 different assignment ideas. Um, after scouring multiple websites and reviewing a ton of different articles, I've selected uh, 10 assignment types to share with you. As I previously mentioned, I will be sharing these assignments along with the, li all the list of all the websites that I reviewed so that you'll have a comprehensive list of resources. Um, so be sure to visit those sites when we're done. Make sure you look at that web page so that you can um, get some additional ideas and then learn more about some of the ideas that I'm presenting to you today. The first assignment type I want to tell you about probably isn't a surprise to you. Um, you can have your students create comics to tell a story. Obviously there is a limitation in the amount of text that can be written. So this is a good way that you can help your kids start to think about using concise language. Um, and this also provides a way for students to be able to select visuals and colors um, and digital media to help tell their story. Um, and with comics, you know, you can go in and you can change the characters, you can change scenes, you can add, o add objects, all things to enhance the story. And the best part is that you don't even have to be an artist or know how to draw. Another common activity um, that a lot of teachers do is at the start of new classes is to have kids do a presentation about themselves. And oftentimes a tool like Google Slides or PowerPoint is used and then each kid is given a slide and they go through and they um, create a slide based upon whatever criteria the teacher gave them. 
that's definitely a great a great activity, but it's also been done a lot. So if you're looking for a new introduction exercise, you can have kids create a comic strip about themselves. Um, I did the one on the screen pretty quickly, and I know it's pretty basic, but as the teacher, you know, you'll be able to set the standard for what you want to have them include. Um, and the nice thing about comics is they can also be something that stands alone or something that's delivered as part of an oral presentation. If you are having your kids create comics, you are not just limited to fiction. You can have your students work on a history project or a report, or you can have them create um, bi biographies. In this particular example, the person was sharing the history of Thanksgiving. So just to give you a quick summary, I know the text is kind of small, but in uh, 1609, a group of people left England. They moved to Holland. They were called pilgrims. They moved to Holland for religious freedom, but they didn't like it there. So they moved to the New World, and they left on the ship named the Mayflower. As the teacher, you get to set the academic criteria. So keep in mind that one of the reasons comic creation is so popular, though, is that kids also appreciate the creative freedom. So for example, in frame two on the top right, you can see that the pilgrims are doing a little freedom dance. And in the lower left, they're actually doing a face palm. And the caption says, I don't like it here. Let's go to the new world. Um, Comics also work for history because of the fact that comics are linear and they're organized into frames or sections. And it's just a great tool to help kids visualize and understand chronological events and timelines. Let's talk science. Uh, we could be talking about physical science, chemistry, geology, whatever. Um, choose an idea, concept, theory, whatever. And then cr have the students create a comic to explain it. So in the example on the screen, we see an explanation about what physical change is versus a chemical change. And then the images combined with the text help explain that. Um, again, keep in mind that because the format of comics is linear, we're reading left to right, and the boxes separate the content, comics are a really great tool to um, document processes and to um, include step-by-step -step instructions. And if any of you have ever put anything together by IKEA, you might be thinking they should adopt this. I know that I do. Um, at any rate, moving on here, storyboards. Um, so this is something that you would be doing along with another project, such as maybe you're having your kids do video projects. So in the video, in, in the planning process um, for a video project, you would want to have your students put together some sort of a storyboard. And most of the storyboards that are out there, I've seen there, um, that are free, they're, they're pretty basic. And we can see that in the top version. On the left side is the story. The center part is the scene. And then the right part has the technical details. Um, if you use a comic like I did at the bottom, we have a much better picture about what's going to be happening in this particular project. And my captions are the actual script. The image is what I want to have happening in the scene. And the yellow text are my technical instructions. Whether it is English or another language, you can have your students create comics in which they have to demonstrate understanding of vocabulary words. This particular assignment required students to match an image um, to the words to demonstrate their understanding of it. We can also use comics to support um, learning of com the complexities of language. So we can have students create comics as a fun way for them to demonstrate their understanding of things like uh, homophones, synonyms, antonyms, and homonyms. On the screen is a comic that my son made about a guy getting away from a zombie. And his teacher asked the students to draw or write a comic on paper to demonstrate the difference between the words since and sense, and also words like were, where, and we are. Um, so in the first two frames, I'll just give you an overview of what this is. Uh, the guy in the blue or in the purple shirt is running away. He says, run, since you are dead, does that mean you still love me? And the zombie says, I still love you. And the guy running away in the purple shirt says, sense the tone, you zombie. So 
clearly my son understood the difference in terms and he also clearly has mastered sarcasm um, but this was a fun project for him to work on but actually when he first started doing it it was one of those assignments where he started to melt down because his um, he didn't have drawing skills and his handwriting was poor and so he knew what he was working on was not so great um, so I ended up showing him Pixton, which is a comic creation tool that I'll be showing you later. And he was able to, de to design something that he was proud of. And he was able then to focus then on the actual task at hand, which was demonstrating how those words um, should be properly used. You can also have your students interpret a story, a poem, or music. In this particular example, we have the interpretation of a line from Romeo and Juliet, Act 1, Scene 1. On pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground. And here in this comic, we see the student match this to a modern day visual and scenario that uh, works perfectly. You can also have your kids create comics as a way to, um, as a different way to respond to current affairs or and news stories. Um, this particular comic was in response to a recent news story about the president not saluting. And the comic includes a recap of what happens. We can see that up in the top left. And then the author asks the question if the president is even required to salute, given he's a civilian. And then the rest of the comic explores the history behind the presidential salutes and its origins, and then concludes with a final position statement. Math teachers uh, also get to use comics if they so choose. Uh, you can have your students demonstrate how to solve a problem. In this example on the screen, we see that the task here is to find out how much this couple can save by paying off a $100,000 loan over 50 years versus 30 years. It's up to you to, to determine the level of details that you want to have your students share and how much of their work they need to show. If you need them to show all of the steps involved with how they arrived at their solution, then you just need to specify that. Um, so again, this, the comic format is lending itself to that step-by-step -step format. Um, you can have your students create word problems also, or you could also create your own problems to share with your students using comics. Okay, we're going to shift gears a little bit, and I'm going to share with you some new tools for your toolbox. I, I know we all just want one tool to do everything, but there's really no such tool. Um, so instead, I'll focus on finding the right tool for the right job, which means later you're going to have to do some exploring. The first comic creation tool that I want to introduce to you is called Pixton. Nearly all of the comics included in this presentation were created with Pixton. And Pixton is my personal favorite. And when I need to create a comic, it's my go-to tool. Um, it's also the tool that I had my son use. I sat down with him for about 10 minutes and showed him the basics, and he was off and happily creating. Um, Pixton is a web-based browser, so you don't have to download special software. It works in all modern browsers. And the free version also lets you create unlimited comics. So be sure to start with the free version. No need to jump into paying for anything just yet. Like most of the comic tools, creation is a matter of dragging and dropping. And you usually have a library of things like characters, text, objects or props, and then backgrounds. And uh, Pixton's greatest strength is probably also its greatest weakness. Pixton allows you to do a high level of positioning with the characters. And the other tools I'm sharing don't have the same level. Um, so in Pixton, all of the characters can be posed. Like every joint can be moved. You can turn the body, you can turn the head, and you can even change things like the facial expressions. So this, of course, is all great. But because every single thing can be manipulated at such a high level, you can get lost. Your students can get lost in the details. And if you're not careful, you can end up in a small clicking battle and trying to get things just right um, because everything on your screen is something that can be manipulated. Um, everyone always wants to know about privacy. When you publish your comics in Pixton, even with a free account, you can set it to private. And by setting it to private, you then have access to a web address that you can then share with others. So only the people that you give the address to will be able to see it. 
if you leave the default setting of the Pixton community, then the comic is going to be public and then part of the Pixton library. And anybody would be able to um, find it, read it, and then comment on it. Another reason I really like Pixton for Educators is that it has an extensive library of assignments, which is searchable by the subject areas that you can see on the screen. And you can also search for assignments by grades, um, even by ratings, and you can do a keyword search as well. So today I have shared with you some broad ideas. The ones you're going to find here are very specific. And there's a ton of assignments for each of the subject areas. And when you find, when you find one of interest, you'll see that you'll get a, um, an example comic. And then you'll get a set of instructions for the assignment that goes to the students. So you won't need to worry about writing up those details. And uh, what's nice too is it'll also tell you um, when you find one of interest, that the subject areas and grade levels that it's appropriate for. And in addition to that, I kind of like this, it also includes a rubric for each assignment. Um, so the details that you're on the slide here aren't necessarily important. Just It's just important to know that you want to have a rubric available. Um, if you end up upgrading to the educational version, you can import an assignment and its um, related materials into your account, and then you'll be able to download the rubric and you can then edit it and modify it for your own needs. And um, while that's nice, just know that you don't have to actually do that upgrade to get the assignments or to see the rubric. So you'll be able to go in and find the assignments that you want, look at the rubric, and then you can just do some copying and pasting and create your own rubric. The next comic creation tool I want to share with you is by Marvel. It's, a, um, it's also free and a web-based tool. There is no special software that has to be downloaded. And with the free version, you can create 11 comics or comic books. And unless you choose to specifically publish to the public gallery, all of your comics are kept private. Um, because this is Marvel, you are stuck with the traditional traditional Marvel super superheroes, the villains, the backgrounds, kind of the props. So um, there is somewhat of a limitation in creativity from that perspective. But it's very easy to create the comic strips. I created one for our slide set today, and um, aside from making elements of your comments of your comics smaller or larger and determining where in the frame it's going to go you don't so you don't have a lot of control so Pixton was very strong in this area and Marvel isn't however if you have younger kids that are getting hung up on the details or the technical details sometimes having less is more so this can also provide more of an opportunity to help your students focus on the story or um, in the dialogue Another reason that I really like the Marvel Creation Tool is because you can actually have your kids create comic books that are up to 22 pages long, and then they can download them as PDFs. So that's pretty cool, and it's all for free. So like I said earlier, Marvel lets you have 11 comic strips or books. So one kid could have 11 comic books, each up to 22 pages long. Um, on this screen, I've highlighted uh, the top menu bar in yellow. So when you are all done creating your comic, um, you can then choose to share it. So you could embed it onto another website or a blog. You can download it. It can be emailed. It can be printed. Um, and that all can happen with the free account. And like I said before, unless you choose to publish it to the gallery, the um, comics are all kept private. Another free web-based comic creation tool that I like is called Toondo, and with the free version you can create an unlimited number of comics. At first it can feel a little, little overwhelming um, when you visit the site because they've got a lot of clutter and extra stuff and some things blinking, but um, once you logged in and you actually click the create button, that stuff goes away. Um, I like this tool. It provides a lot of different options and the ability to perform a fairly high level of customization without overcomplicating the creation process. So as I just said, once you actually click on the link to create, you're taken to a pretty clean interface. And like the previous comments, this is a drag and drop process. You can add characters, backgrounds, text, objects. Um, I like to do a lot because even though you don't have the same level of control and positioning your characters like you did in Pixton, 
you still have a lot of options. So, for example, I can still change the emotions on my characters. I can resize them. I can change the colors. And with the characters, I can even work on customizing their traits. So I can change their eyebrow shape, their nose, and their hair color, and um, all kinds of different things. So, in my opinion, probably of the three that I've just introduced to you, I think that um, given the number of options and its ability to manipulate them, that it's um, maybe the easiest. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the tools that you use to manipulate the different aspects of the comics are clearly labeled and they're always in the same place. They're always at the bottom of the screen. The other reason that I really like this tool is because you can upload your own photos and you can do a little editing of it and you can also then um, do some of your own drawings and then you can add both of these into your comics. And then once you're all done, you're, you can publish your comic and with Toondo, your comics are private and when you go to publish, you can choose if you want it to be public or only accessible to people with the link and the free version lets you have a, a link that you can email to anyone just like the other tools. There's an embed code available and you can also uh, print it. So uh, Toondo is another tool that I, I really like. On the resource page that I have created for you, I have a list of other comic creation tools. It's just not possible to go through every single one of them and then and also maintain your attention to all of the details about them. So you're going to want to visit that web page and check them out. But the three that I introduced to you today are definitely my most favorite. Keep in mind too though that you and your students could also use Google Slides and PowerPoint to create comics. Um, so while you don't have the built-in characters and backgrounds like you do with some of these other tools, inserting and using your own images is pretty easy, um, and so is adding in text. So both of the tools allow you to add in your own shapes and call-out boxes, and you have complete control over what you want your comic layout to look like. Um, keep in mind also that PowerPoint has a large clip art gallery that you can pull from and in Google Slides you can also use the built-in search feature to grab images. So that brings us to the end of today's session. As I just mentioned, I will be sending out to you the link to the web page. It has a list of all the, the different tools that are available, a recap of our assignments that we reviewed today, along with a list of other resources or websites that list tons of other ideas. So thank you very much and have a good day.